If you take a look up above your heads, you will see an animal spotting out of there. That's going to help you identify some of the animals that we might be seeing here on our journey. Now, no guarantees we're going to be able to see them all, but we usually get some pretty good luck. If you are going to be taking pictures, I highly recommend using some sort of a sports action motion setting. Basically anything with a high shutter speed because we are going to be on the move and of course so will the animals. And I also cannot stop for every animal that we find. So when I do stop, but it's going to be for a pretty select few animals for about five seconds and sometimes even less. Really good idea. Take the time right now. Get your cameras out and get them ready to go. You really never know when or where we are going to be seeing some of these animals. But my friends, our first area here, it's through what's called the Little Aturi Forest. And out here, colors of these animals blend in very well with the dense vegetation. Left there inside there, there's two different the animals. Of the day. You can see that tan antelope there called the Greater Kudu. Now just behind them, over on the hill as well, there's that dark orange colored animal through the bushes there, and that's called the Wongo. Now the Greater Kudu, they're actually the second tallest antelope in Africa. We can tell that those ones up there are all females due to the fact that they do not have any horns. Now the Bongo, they have the nickname of the Ghost of the Forest because a dark orange color and of course white stripe pattern on their body is a very, very good combination to help them blend into the background. Oh, now their horns face backwards that way when they run through some of the tail brush, those horns don't get tangled. But using their horns, it's easy to tell the difference between a male and a female. Female's horns make an X shape, so they kind of crisscross off towards the back. Well, the male's horns, they make a Y shape, so it's very, very rare that you'll ever see their touch. But my friends, as I pull forward, of course, you'll see that really big water bowl here on your left hand side. The animals do do like these water bowls as gathering places. Of course, when the animal we can sometimes see gathered all this one here is that beautiful black rhino. Unfortunately, though, the black rhino it has been hunted nearly to extinction, and hundreds of thousands have actually been killed for their horns. Today, there is less than 3,500 of these black rhinos left in the entire world. But of course, our conservation efforts are doing their best to monitor those powerful animals and to give them any veterinary treatment and rehabilitation that they may need. Now, every single day, two to three black rhinos are being hunted and killed for those horns. So really think about that, of course. There's a lot of them every single day. Now, those black rhinos, they do have a pretty unique upper lip because it's flexible. So they'll actually take their upper lip and then they stretch it out kind of like a tongue or a finger as a way to help them grab some of the food. And, of course, then they will scoop it right off into their mouths. Now, they do have horns made out of keratin, the exact same thing that our hair and our nails are made out of. They also have extremely poor eyesight. Sadly, it does make it very easy for a lot of those poachers to hunt them. But my friends, now that we've seen just a few of those horse animals, we are going to take this middle road here towards the Safi River. And of course, it does connect to the Nile River. So if we're really lucky, we might spot a couple of Nile species that have started to migrate over here. Sometimes we're even lucky enough to see a couple of Nile hippopotamus hanging out down here within some of the water. Now as I get to the bottom of the hill, take a look on your right hand side because there is one completely out of the water there too, right? Now when they are babies, they do weigh in at about 85 pounds with a full grown male weighing up to 5,500 pounds. So they're very, very large animals. Of course, you'll see that one out of the water there to your right hand side. Whoever also take a look on the left, over within the water there. You'll start to see a whole group of those hippos. A big fat one. A group of for hippos. That's actually a pretty fun one. It is in fact called a bloat. Also on the island there, to your left hand side, a whole bunch of those great birds there. Those are yeah. the big fat pelicans. Do they get their name because during mating season, the colors of the birds do indeed change from gray to blue. Oh, but my friends, even though these hippos are such large animals, well, they're actually excellent swimmers. However, they do prefer to kind of walk these or glide birds. in the bottom of the river instead of trying to swim through any of the water. Now, they're also nocturnal animals, so they will spend up to 16 hours of their day submerged in the water. And as you can see from those ones are yeah. they do tend to sleep that way as well but when they're asleep, their brains will automatically send their bodies up to the surface to get a breath of fresh air. That way they don't necessarily have to try and remember to wake themselves up to do so. Like I said, nocturnal animal, so it is very rare that you do see them outside of the water during the daytime. Now over here on your left hand side, if you look pretty closely, you'll actually see one out in the water. There's even a baby hippopotamus down there standing up as well. Oh, baby. Now during the nighttime, these hippos tend to be a little bit more active, sometimes even a little bit more vocal. They have a unique vocalization called the wheeze, huh? And it's so loud it can be Two miles away. Now, my friends, I do ask that everyone does remain fully seated, especially as I cross over this bridge. I need everyone to fully have a seat there. For See, gators. Gators. Seated. Of course, as we do cross this bridge, I'll also take a look on your left hand side. That's your second species there. Those are crocodiles. Oh, there's a crocodile. Now, these are crocodiles. Everyone have a seat for me, please. They are cold blooded animals, so they like.
like to kind of hang outside the water, and they will actually soak up the crocodiles. Once I get two more, you see them jump off into the water or simply open up their mouths. That makes you awesome. Now push out some of that warm air hand to regulate their body temperature since they don't have any sweat glands. <laughs> But my friends, as I do start to pull forward here, looks like we are getting a little bit closer towards another different ecosystem. And I can tell, trees here are starting to thin out a little bit, so hopefully across the way, we'll see a couple of different animals that we get to see out here on the preserve. Huh, another first, cart. Well, speaking of different, coming up on your right hand side, you're going to see my all time favorite tree known as the baobab tree. Now, it is also referred to as huh. an upside down tree because its branches, well, they do kind of look like roots. It can spend up to nine months on a year, just like tree. that one. They're completely leafless and they typically live to be about 2,000 years old. Whoa. But up there on your right hand side, it is actually about halfway there already. Well, my friends, we are now entering off into that different ecosystem in my personal opinion. I see a giraffe. I see a giraffe. Yeah, it's a giraffe. Yeah, it's a giraffe. 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 It's Coming up here on your right hand side, you will start to see an animal with really big horns. That's called Ancoli cattle. Now, they are the only domesticated animal on the reserve. Giraffe. Also known as the Watusi cattle, named after the Watusi tribe that domesticated them. Now, those horns are on their head. They can actually grow to be about three to five feet in length, roughly about 20 inches around at the base. Now, they do look very heavy. However, they're made up of a hollow honeycomb shape on the huge inside of those horns. horns. That way, the blood can pump oh up into God. those horns and then back down into their bodies as well. Wow. Down. As I pull forward here as well, over on your left hand side, fairly new animal on the reserve. Black Tanaway animals you might be able to see are called the African wild dogs. Now they're kind of hanging oh, out the left side of the cave there if you look pretty closely. Oh! Now they are also known as the painted dogs due to the very big markings on their body. They're actually born on black. Down as they start to get a little bit bigger and mature, the black color will fade off into a lot of the tan and the white that you can see there. But Aww. unlike other dogs and wolves, they only have four toes. And of course, they are absolutely adorable because they do have ears kind of like Mickey Mouse. Once again, my friends, I do need everyone to stay fully seated for me, even if we are going nice and slow. Off towards the back, I need everyone to have a seat there. As I do start to pull forward here, my friends, over on the left hand side, beautiful caramel colored antelope there. That is the sable antelope. Now, you might actually recognize those animals because they are the antelope of our reserve. You can usually tell if it is the most dominant sable antelope. Typically, they do have a darker coat on their body than the rest. However, it does not have to be a male. So, of course, it can be a female, giraffe. but it really just depends on who to the darker coat as they grow. Whoa, whoa. Now, when they run in their herds, they do run with an alpha male and an alpha female, with the female being the one that makes most of those decisions. Now, with the African wild dogs, when mothers have litters, they can have up to 20 pups at a time, running in packs of 5 to 15, depending on how much food supply they have. But even though they are so adorable, I don't recommend trying to play with them. Now, they do the highest kill rate of any mammal at 80%, higher than a lion's kill rate. Now, the mothers will actually go out and chase their prey. Once they catch that, they will eat it, take it on home, and regurgitate it for their children to eat. A couple more giraffes coming up around the truck here. Now, these giraffes, they are the world's tallest land animal, but believe it or not, they do only have seven vertebrae in their necks. That, of course, being the exact same amount that we so have in our necks. Their giraffes are just much, much larger than ours. Now, you might notice that the pattern on these giraffes' bodies, it is fairly irregular, but that's a pretty easy way to tell that they are indeed the side giraffes. Also, it kind of looks like they've got horns on their heads, but those are not horns. They're actually called massacones. Now, when a baby giraffe is born, they can look a full-grown man directly in the eye, standing at about six feet tall. They also have about a six-foot drop to the ground as they're being born. But when they eat, at the base of the tree eating the underneath leaves. Typically though, you won't see them biting on the branches. What they prefer to do is they'll take their tongue, they'll wrap their tongue around the branch and then they strip it of its leaves. Their tongues can be about 16 inches long with a black purple color to them and that's to help prevent those tongues from getting sunburned while they eat. Cool. Come up here on your right hand side, pretty big herd of these gray animals. These are called the white bearded wildebeest. And also coming up at the top of the hill here to your right hand side, very small tiny tan antelope there as well. That's called the springbok. And of course there's a couple more giraffes here on the right as well. Another giraffe. Now the springbok, they get their name for their springy action called pronkin. And of course they can actually jump so high that they will go from the right side of my truck up and over the canopy and land safely on the left hand side about 12 feet directly up into the air. 
larger teen antelope here in your right. This is a Patterson Zealand. Now they are one of the largest antelopes in Africa and on a full grown male from their shoulders to the ground can be six feet tall. From a standstill position they can actually jump up to about eight feet straight up in the air spotting through their head while you sit here on the chalk. The white for the wild beast. Now they get their name from the Afrikaans or the Desmane wild beast. Of course getting that name because it gives off a scary appearance to a lot of animals. But to us, also known as new, spelled G-N-U, because they make a low grunting noise, kind of sounds like new. Now when those animals sleep at night, they will sleep in a perfect row, leaving just enough space in between each row, in case of an emergency. That way they're able to get up and run without trampling all over each other. Now that herd there did look like a fairly large herd of white brittle wildebeest, however it's actually very small. They do run in herds up to about one million of them at a time. Now my friends, as I do start to pull forward here, of course if you take a look around the truck, you will notice that a lot of these trees here have been knocked down. Well, that's a very good indicator that the African elephants have definitely walked through here before. The huh. good news is, we're not going into Tembo country just yet. Tembo is one of the for elephants, so we'll see you some more across the way. But start to look around the right hand side, of course, you'll start to see there's a couple of those African elephants right over there to your right. Good view of them. Now, a couple of easy ways to tell if it is a bull, also known as a male African elephant. One of the easiest ways is obviously going to be based on their size. They do tend to be just a little bit larger than the females. But also, when a male African elephant reaches maturity, they will actually separate themselves completely from the rest of the herd. Now, sometimes that does tend to happen at around age 10 or 11, which of course can be very young within an elephant's life. Now these elephants, of course, they do have their beautiful tusks that are made out of ivory. Now ivory is actually very expensive on the black market, and unfortunately that's why they are hunted and poached for those tusks. Now my friends, like I said, still not quite into Tembo country just yet. Once we get to the other side of the bridge, we will be entering off into Tembo country. Now, get your cameras out and ready. A couple of locations over here in Tembo country cannot stop for a quarter of So just make sure you prepare for wherever the elephants might be. Now my friends, as I exit off this bridge, definitely looks like the rest of that female herd has at least walked through here before. And I can tell there's a lot of elephant footprints here on the ground. But as I do start to pull forward, of course, we are driving through the red clay pits. So take a pretty close look at this wall here on your right hand side. You will notice that there are a whole bunch of elephant test marks there within a lot of that red clay. Now elephants, they oh, wow. love going up to those red clay pits and they will actually dig their tusk into them. Once they get some of that clay loose, well they will eat it just in case they're missing any nutrients from their diet. So that's kind of their way to help take their vitamins in the that's morning. That's pretty good. As a way to help out the elephants as much as possible, there are a lot of scientists and researchers studying their vocal patterns to try and find out what they need. Now, one of the biggest Eddie. things that they want is that these elephants here really, really do not like to be around. Eddie. So a lot of the farmers here in Africa, they have been setting up honeybee fences a way to keep the elephants out of their crops and of course in return they have gained a new crop of honey. As I pull forward you'll start to see some more from here on your left hand side. I take a, a giant look at the tree. shape of these elephants ears. You will notice it does make the shape of Africa. Well of course that is a very easy way to tell if they are indeed African elephants. Now they also like to take their ears and they will flap them back and forth. Just because on the inside of an elephant's ear, they do actually have some blood vessels. Now, when that cooler air starts to hit those blood vessels, mm -hmm. it will drop their body temperatures up to 15 degrees, which Giant definitely tree. makes quite a big difference for them. They also tend to have really dirty backs and bellies, just because they have some sensitive skin. And of course, it'll burn, especially here in the hot African sun. It's going in the water. So they do like to take dirt, sand, clay, mud, grass water, anything like that. They'll throw it under their backs and their belly to give themselves a natural sunscreen. And going in the water. The protected throughout the day. Wow. Now when a baby is born, they do weigh in roughly at about 300 pounds. And of course that can only happen after the mother has gone through roughly about a 22 month long pregnancy. Well my friends, we are now swinging past what's called Flamingo Island and of course that is home <laughs> to the greater Flamingos. Flamingos. Now that term greater in their name, it does refer to their size. These are one of the largest flamingo species. Might spot a couple of grayer ones out there and that's just because when they're hatched, they are in fact hatched gray. Now these are also the palest of the flamingo species. So they won't start to take on that pinkish tint until about roughly a year or two after they're born from their diet of shrimp, which contains beta carotene and that's actually what gives them that pinkish tint. And of course my friends, a group name for flamingos, well that is in fact called a flame buoyance. However, as we pull forward here, we are entering off into what we like to refer to as white rhino territory. Now we do know that this is white rhino territory because the really large mud pit on the ground to your left, and with those mud pits, of course, will come a couple of white rhinos. Now 
Holly Brown knows they love going up to those mud pits and they will actually roll around in it, kind of like they're taking a bath. They'll give their bodies a really good coating of some of that mud, and of course then they let it dry. But that's actually their way to give themselves some sort of a natural sunscreen. Now, white rhinos, they get their name from the Afrikaans word vite, and that's spelled W-I-T, which means wide. They do have very wide and square mouths, easy way to tell them apart from the black rhino. Right-hand side, shaggy brown animal there, that's called the water buck. Now, of course, they get their name because they spend a good majority of their lives around water. When they get in the water, their fur will become very greasy and often quite smelly as well. You'll see the white rhinos one more time here. Now, very similar to the black rhinos, these white rhinos, of course, have that horn made out of keratin with poor eyesight, making it easy for poachers to hunt them. Of course, so over the years, that word white, well, it was actually mistaken for the word white, and that is how they got their name. But my friends, as I pull forward here, take a pretty close look over on the bottom of the corner of the hill. To your left-hand side, you're actually going to see two cheetahs that are laying down. Like I said, bottom left corner, you'll see two of them right in front of the rock there. Oh, cheetahs. Now these cheetahs, they are the fastest land animal. They can run up to about 60 to 70 miles an hour. However, they can only do that for a very, very short amount of time before they have to stop and cool their bodies back down. Now, kind of like how we use our arms as a way to help us balance our I saw it. These cheetahs actually do that same sort of a thing, only they'll do it with their tails. Now, they are the only daytime hunters, and they're also the only big cats that will purr. You do have a couple more here on the next set of hills to your left-hand side. If you look up towards the top, right corner you actually see two more there's one that's kind of behind the tree and oh, there's I one all the way up at the top right corner there as well now underneath the cheetah's eye very distinctive black line that goes from their eye straight down their cheek well sort of like how football players put a little bit of black under their eyes this does help protect the cheetah's eyes from some of the bright sun during the day of course while they are trying to hunt as a way to help protect the livestock our conservation efforts are working with groups to train Anatolian shepherds and Kangal dogs to protect the livestock, but of course without endangering any of those cheetahs. Next big rock formation here on your left. This is known as the Kofi Rocks. Now it also likes to attract a lot of big cats. Sometimes we're even lucky enough to see a couple of lions hanging out around these Kofi Rocks. So definitely keep your eyes open for them. Now we'll give you a heads up. Lions are nocturnal animals, so they do spend about 18 to 20 hours of their day completely inactive. And at nighttime, the females, exactly? they do most of their hunting. I thought females can sit back and protect the prime. Don't worry about the animals on the right. We're going to be seeing them here in just a second. However, as I pull towards the back of the rocks, take a very close look there, my friends. You'll we'll start to see a couple of those lions that are actually laying down in the back. Oh, here. I see now, a lion's roar, that can be heard from up to six miles away. And at nighttime, their eyesight will become six times stronger than it was during the day. During the day, we see just as well as lions do. Now, these lions, they do like to hang out kind of towards the top of the rocks. That actually allows them to help look down into some of the taller brush to see if there's any prey that may be trying to hide out from them. And of course, my friends, the Swahili term for lion. Now, that's a name that we all know and love. It is indeed Simba. Speaking of Simba, left hand side is Simba's best friend, Pumba. Also, Pumba. has a couple of warthogs. Warthogs. Now, warthogs, they are the largest burrowing animals. They'll actually back up into their burrows just in case any larger predators come. They will see some of those sharp tusks, and of course, then they'll run away. But don't actually call a warthog Pumba. No, Swahili phrase Pumba, that means foolish or silly. And of course, they're definitely far from that. Huh. Right hand side there, you will see a couple more water buck. Now, those are greats, also known as plain zebras. And of course, you'll see a couple of ostrich. Now, as I pull forward here as well, my friends, take a look up against the island of trees on your right hand side. There's actually a whole list of ostrich eggs that's just down there. Got about five or six of them just in front of the oh, trees. Oh, so some eggs. Now, an ostrich, they are the world's largest bird. And even though they are equipped to fly, well, they are completely flightless. Now, one of those ostrich eggs can weigh up to about three pounds and is the equivalent to 24 chicken eggs. So they're very, very large. The ostrich, they like to lay their eggs in a big group. So sometimes in one area, you can see up to about 30 ostrich eggs. That way they can kind of lay them and leave them. They don't necessarily have to try and sit around their eggs all day long. Now with those zebras, we can definitely tell that they are black with white stripes because of the color of their nose and their lips. But I don't recommend trying to get too close to those hind legs. Now with one swift kick, they can actually break a charging lion's jaw. Very, very powerful animals. And to prove how powerful those legs are after they're born, it only takes them a couple of hours until they can actually get up and run. Come up here on your right hand side, you will start to see a couple of black and white birds there. Those are the yellow billed storks. Well, of course, they do get their name because they have a very, very long and beautiful yellow bill. 
Now they are kind of wrist birds, so they'll basically eat anything smaller than they are. Sometimes you'll even see them jump up into the water as a way to help them collect some of their food. Once they're finished in the water, they will then stand out in the sun and spread their wings as a way to help them dry off some of their feathers. But my friends, I am very sad to tell everyone that this gate right here, well, it does mark the end of our safari. So I am going to be driving out over to the nearest boarding post. But even though our journey has to come to an end, just for now, of course, the conservation does not. A great way that you can help conserve is by recycling old cell phones and laptops. They contain a mineral called coltan, and that's actually mined in a lot of the natural habitats of the animals like the ones that we just saw here on the reserve. For my friends at work, looking for another up close encounter with some animals in Africa, head on over and check out the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. Now that is a self-guided walking tour. It typically takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. But over there you can see gorillas, meerkats, snake and mole rats, hippos, and zebras, so definitely check that out. The entrance will be up at the top of the hill and to your right. Any wilderness explorers on board, you have been riding on the Simba 1, Simba, Simba, and the number 1. Head back down into the village to collect your badge.